I followed my dreams and opened an antique store to have adventures and spend time as a family. Sometimes you have to climb a mountain and open some new doors to find the treasures inside. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. Hey, good morning everyone. So today I'm headed back to a place I've actually been once before. Lots of cool stuff. I uh, was able to purchase a couple of really neat things last time, an old sign, a couple vintage bicycles. Um, and today I'm headed out there because um, I wasn't able to access some of the sheds and buildings in winter because they were snowed in, but now it is spring coming on summer and the snow is all gone, thankfully, and I have a chance to get in there. So I'm gonna drive about an hour, ooh, what am I going, oh, an hour south of the city. Best to know which way you're headed so you don't get lost heading in the wrong direction. I've done that in Saskatchewan before and that wasn't much fun. Uh, I'm going an hour south of the town and uh, hopefully gonna find some treasures this morning. So follow along on today's journey and we're gonna look for some rare, unusual and cool antiques as usual. Um, right now the ambulance is empty. Let's try and fill her up. And it is a beautiful sunny spring day today. The highways are clear and a perfect time to take the ambulance out on the road. And driving down the highway, I spy a little antique shop on the side of the road. So we're going to head inside, have a little browse around, and see if there's anything in there that needs to come home with us. This shop has been in business for well over 20 years, and they focus on furniture, plates, and dinnerware, but they also do get some collectibles in here from time to time as well. So I'm going to have a look around and see if there's any smalls that could come back on the trip. <music> some new shoes. Mm. I think my wife will like them. Well, maybe no shoes on this trip. These ones are just a touch too Dutch. There's still time to do a little sightseeing around town. Let's see what we can find. So I decided to stop at the little town site museum here in Wetaskiwin on Main Street. Uh, it was nice and quiet here this morning, so I thought, well, I'll have a look around. Why not? I got an hour to kill. So uh, let's see what kind of exhibits they have. This is kind of an unusual piece here. So this is for, uh, this would have been in a department store or shoe store. You put your foot basically right in there <laughs> and it would use like horrible radiation to uh, check your foot size. So it, uh, yeah, they don't use them anymore. And uh, I'm sure if I had like a Geiger counter, this thing's probably putting off all sorts of, you know, horrible nuclear radiation right now. But uh, yeah, they didn't know, right? Nobody knew what this sort of stuff would do to you back then. but. Um, yeah, I haven't come across one for sale uh, in the last little while, but that's a neat little, you know, toxic machine. And the neat thing about coming to museums is sometimes you learn about uh, things you've had. Now, I had this piece here, and I wasn't sure exactly what that was from. I thought maybe a fan mode or something. It looks like it was actually off of a little lathe. So that would have been kind of neat, because uh, that's a watchmaker's lathe. Um, so I've had part of that. Now I know if I would have hung on to it, or maybe I still have it kicking around, I know what it's for. And... Looks like they've got some fur trading. Oh, the lights just popped on. They've got some fur trading stuff. So Hudson's Bay blanket, an old musket, some odds and ends. It would have been sort of thing you saw at the trading post. And a lot of these places are set up so that uh, kids and classes can come through here and learn about the past, especially in a smaller town like this. Um, it's great access for them. So you can kind of see what types of different furs there were and kind of how the economy was built in this area. Pretty neat. <laughs> They've got a little classroom set up in here so they can see what it was like to go to school back in the old days. A little general store. This is probably lots of fun for the kids to go climb and play through. But a lot of guys, you know, might want them for decoration. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you polish something like this up, you can make a coffee table, well, do something cool. A lot of guys make coffee tables out of them or, you know, hang them on the wall. But... That one's got a big prop on it, so. Well, that's the way to do it. If you got a hanger, open the old hanger doors up. Boy, that is ever a big door. Well, I guess it would have to be to get a plane in.
48 or 49 Ford with a V8 Ford engine in it. This thing would have had some giddy up. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you want a fast track or this. <laughs> Mountain Howitzer. Mountain Howitzer? Sure. That's little fire truck. And so what year would you say this x-ray table's from? And it's early. Oh yeah, it's got General a Electric X-ray Corporation. Yeah, My eyes cradle, that's all part of it. The stuff next door to it, all the stuff under the path. Uh, yeah, you're right. If you were doing like Frankenstein and then you uh, turn the crank, this would yeah. be a great movie prop. Oh, yeah. And there's all the gear. These old machines were not particularly safe. In fact, I'm sure the doctor would say, the good news is we found out it was just a spring. The bad news is you're now sterile. And although this thing is really cool, I just don't have space at the shop for a machine this size. But I will see if I have any friends that are looking for a movie prop or an industrial piece that they might be able to repurpose into something else. But I do spot a few things that I can use at the shop, so I'm going to load up and head back. Man, after all that moving, I got to go get myself something to drink, like a stop at Orange Julius or something. Well, I am exhausted. That was a long day of uh, picking this ambulance. It's probably never been more full. There's all kinds of cool stuff back there. Um, you know, we got the uh, little survey car wheelchair, the agent screen, um, some uh, early fossils, just all kinds of cool and interesting things. Uh, there's a BA bulk dealer sign. So we'll unpack when we get back to the shop and um, kind of do a better layout. But yeah, there was a whole pile of stuff today. So I'm going to head back home, uh, rest up a little bit, and then I got to unpack this all tomorrow. So I'm driving back and I have a box of fossils on the seat next to me and it's so heavy that my car thinks that uh, someone's sitting in the seat belt which makes the buzzer go off like crazy. So I've had about an hour uh, trip on the highway with the buzzer kind of going ee, 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 all the way back. I guess I could have stopped and uh, maybe pulled the seat belt out but uh, once you're going you're going right? Well, I'm at the shop. Now I've just got to unload and get everything inside. Yeah, the only thing I'm not sure why I bought was this uh, probably late 1800s Asian screen divider, but it's all ripped. So I don't know if somebody can actually uh, do anything with it. I just I just hate leaving something like that behind. Yeah. You oh, know. All the panels ripped. Or? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. But it's uh, it's old and it's cool and I don't know. It was pretty much a really good price. Yeah, this... And there's a vintage porcelain bulk BA dealer sign. It's upside down now, but uh, this is about 10 feet long. Surprisingly, it fit in the back of the ambulance. And that was a shock even to me. Uh, close to it, yeah. Slip into the front, no one. We also picked up a box of ammonite and baculite fossils, but I'm gonna show the kids. So these are all, well, some of the fossils that I picked up today. Uh, most of these are from the ocean and prehistoric, like the shells. So you guys look at this. Cool. That one still looks exactly like a shell, doesn't it? Like a muscle. Yeah. Yeah, except as hard as a rock. Kind of cool. What are the coolest ones here? Um, uh, well, this one is pretty cool, but it has a lot of dust on it. I touched it. Yeah, it's I dusty. Think. They were sitting in storage for a long time. And it says, you can kind of read there, it's uh, baculite. So that's part of that would have been from the same uh, underwater creature. Do you know what kind of creature it was? It was like a big squid, a really? big giant prehistoric squid. And so that's a tentacle that you're holding, basically a rock now. Can we eat it? Uh, sure, yeah, we can go to the sushi place and you can ask for baculite served up on a platter. So look in the big box over here, guys. So, um, do you know what that is? It's a fossil. Yes, it's a fossil. Do you know what kind? It starts with an M. Am. No, 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 no. Am, uh, no. It's an ammonite. And it's uh, like a big giant uh, snail, basically. But uh, when this is all uh, when this is all polished up, this is actually a very nice rainbow sort of finish on there. You've seen them at the stores, right? Yeah. When we go and look at the fossil stores? Yeah. So this, uh, this would have been part of the ocean floor at one time, the sand and 
when the uh, creatures died and settled, it uh, later got turned into stone. So now they're stuck in there forever. And sometimes it's interesting to see that things that existed so many years ago look exactly the same now, hey? Like this shell. Yeah, the, the shells look pretty much exactly the same now as they did back then, don't they? They look just like shells. Okay, so you guys got to tell me which one your favorite one is. You like the leaf the best? Why do you like the leaf? It's just so interesting. Yeah, okay, and Jason, what's your favorite? I like the squiddies. The squids? So I eat them all. Mmm, gross. So we're all unloaded at the store, and man, there was a lot of really cool stuff. Let me show you. I got another really early bicycle. This is probably 1920s. Uh, tires. Well, they might need a bit of air, to say the least. Certainly flat. This is a Redbird model, which is a Canadian brand out of Toronto. Uh, and overall, it's all complete. It's just dusty, dirty, and in need of some TLC. Another item which you probably saw me looking at if you were a soldier in the First World War and you were injured to the point where you couldn't walk, um, if you had the means, you would get yourself something like this. Now this is electric, uh, it runs on two six volt batteries, and I imagine it was probably fairly quick. Uh, this would have been his transportation to get around. So um, yeah, in all, it's actually all there. Um, it has a little tiller that you steer the front wheel. And th these wheels almost remind me of like the old Bugatti race cars that had the solid rim. So that, that came in. We also got the bulk dealer sign, which uh, amazingly fit inside of my car. And uh, we did do a little cleaning to it. As you can see, it's got a nice shine. Um, I cleaned it and waxed it and uh, came out looking pretty good. And I did also get this antique steam engine. Now, people collect steam. Uh, we have the miniature ones and the trains, but you get something like this. This is a real little steam engine that probably would have been in a small facility or plant. And looking at the top, it's got a maker's name and number on it. Made in Harrison, New Jersey. And this is what I've done with the little automotive brass fitting rack. It's a great spot to display my oil cans. And of course I kept all the little jars that had the original logo on top, Canada Motor Products. So those are the jars that probably would have actually been right in that rack. But uh, certainly makes a good display piece and it's in fantastic condition as well. There was a sign that said 1918 movie camera. Sadly that was gone, just the reels were made. There's also a box of antique movie reels. This is a uh, winder that you would have used to wind the film back on. And aside from the reels, we also picked up a couple old tackle boxes. Now this has about three or four generations of fishing supplies in them. So some of these can be quite old and some may even go back to the 20s or 30s. I don't know a whole lot about fishing and tackle, but we are gonna learn and we're gonna find out and see exactly what we have. I can tell right away from looking at some of these boxes that some of these items are quite old. So if anybody knows about fishing gear, you can drop me a line and let me know what I have if you see anything cool in there. But this will be some research and be a lot of fun to do. And there was a little brown folder. When I opened it up, there was a whole bunch of different fly fishing lures. And these are all hand tied, beautifully done. And I'm sure to a collector or to somebody who does fly fishing, that'll be a fantastic addition to their collection as well. Honorable mentions this week include this vintage fire hydrant, a box full of William Britton's metal figures, and a whole pile of straight razors. I also picked up this working Vendo 61D, which is sort of an unusual model. It's a 10 cent machine, so it's got the early coin mech in it. It's got the door on the side for putting your bottles in, and just your classic iconic Coke machine. A lot of times you see the Vendo 44s, a lot of times you see the Vendo 44s, um, but this is a really good model. The type with the glass door on the front is just as popular and very desirable model. So uh, thankfully this guy is in working condition and I was a little bit low on Coke machines at the shop, so it's nice to have one back in stock. So another day, another adventure, and some cool finds. Thanks so much again for tuning in and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. You can check us out online at curiosityedmonton.ca. Uh, we're also on Instagram and Facebook as well, but tune in weekly as we've got lots more adventures coming and we sure hope you enjoy them. Thanks again and we'll see you guys soon. Bye for now.